Dr. Ken Landa, let's talk about opioid-induced constipation. You have some pain, and about 15% of the general population here in the United States complains of chronic pain, and as a matter of fact, about 3% of the people are taking long-term pain medicine, typically with the opioids, typically with medicines like hydrocodone or oxycontin or fentanyl. They take them for months to even years, Estimated about 38 million people taking chronic medicine for pain, 240 million prescriptions each year in the United States, and people take them for low back pain, that's the principal reason, but also for fibromyalgia or neuralgia or rheumatoid arthritis. We know that the condition OIC, or opioid-induced constipation, also is referred to as OBD, opioid bowel dysfunction. It's the most common side effect of taking the opioids, and unfortunately, you rarely develop tolerance. And as a matter of fact, actually, the longer you take the medicine, the worse the situation gets. So that somewhere between 40% and 90% of people who are taking these drugs suffer from the condition. They have a significant decrease in the quality of life. The constipation, as I say, is anywhere between 40 and 90% of the people. We have chronic abdominal pain in about six out of every 10 people. We have straining, again, six out of every 10 people who are taking the opioids. And we have fewer than three bowel movements a week in half of the people. And as a matter of fact, because of these GI symptoms that are so unpleasant, somewhere around a third of the people taking the opioids either stop them completely or significantly reduce the amount that they're taking. We know that you can also develop some other kind of symptoms, maybe some cramping or some nausea or some vomiting or some gastroesophageal reflux. Why do the opiates seem to interfere with the bowel? We know they work on the brain for the pain, but did you also realize there are receptors for the opioids inside the intestine? And as a matter of fact, the narcotic sits on these receptors, and as long as it's there, you're not going to have normal bowel function. The chemicals, the oxycontin and the hydrocodone and all of those kind of drugs, actually they delay the transit through the gastrointestinal tract, they delay the emptying of the stomach, they stimulate waves in the gut that don't push the food from the one end to the other, they actually stimulate contraction or closure of the sphincters between the stomach and the intestine, and the small intestine and the large intestine. There's another one, and it's closed. They stimulate absorption of fluid from the gut and decrease the secretion of fluid into the gut. And of course, they decrease the muscle contractility. How do we define opioid-induced constipation? It's when you take the drugs and you have a decrease of bowel function. You have a decreased number of spontaneous bowel movements. You have the development of straining. You pass hard stools, and unfortunately, you also seem to have a sense of incomplete evacuation. Some people progress so far that they develop impaction, and around the impaction, the stool impaction in the gut, they can develop some overflow diarrhea or stool incontinence. That's a major embarrassment. Some people develop obstruction, and as a matter of fact, if you're taking other kind of drugs because the intestines aren't working, and that's where the drugs happen to be, well, you're going to have a decreased absorption. Well, we know that there are a lot of therapies available. A lot of people say, well, go get some physical activity, add some fiber to the diet, go take a lot more fluid. But actually, none of those seems to work. So people reach for a laxative. We have different kind of laxatives. We have a laxative that might be a bulk-forming laxative, medicine like Colace or the osmotic laxatives like milk of magnesia or the stimulant laxatives like bisacodyl or the surfactants. They actually increase the amount of fluid inside the gut, they soften the stool, they inhibit the reabsorption of fluid, and they can actually stimulate contractions of the gut. But do they work? Well, no, they don't work very well, at least in people who are taking the opioids, because they don't address the basic underlying issue where the bowel is put to sleep by the opioids. We know that people often take several different types of laxatives together, and unfortunately the laxatives can cause symptoms that can mimic those that you find with the opioid-induced constipation. So people can get nausea and vomiting and abdominal pain just from taking the laxatives. And then we know that if you happen to take other kinds of drugs along with the opioids, you might even worsen your bowel problems. So, for instance, you have a cold, you take an antihistamine, it's going to slow down the bowels even more. 
or for some people taking a calcium blocker for their heart, taking verapamil, going to slow down the bowels, or oxybutynin, medicines that are very commonly used for women who have overactive bladder, going to slow down the bowels. And so too with bismuth preparations or aluminum or calcium containing salts, all of these are going to slow the bowels. And those are very commonly used medicines for gastroesophageal reflux, for heartburn symptoms like that. Well, the Food and Drug Administration has approved two different kind of medicines. One is Mavantic and the other is Relistor. Those are relatively recently approved. If you'd like to learn more about these medicines for opioid-induced constipation, watch our videos on that subject. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Ken Landau.